joust day tomorrow, so I'm going to be kept busy for many hours. Oh, I heard this great story. I think you might like it. It's about a king, a bishop and a baker. Now, in this story, the king is King John. So, it's around the time of Magna Carta, and he had a reputation for being cruel. King John was on his travels, and as he always did when he was on his travels, he took with him his pride and joy, his pack of hunting hounds. But he was suddenly called away on business, so he left his pack of hounds in the care of the local bishop. Now, this bishop was a vain and a proud man, and very, very greedy, but a man who would never do anybody a favour unless it served his own interests. So when King John's servants delivered the hounds, well, the bishop had them put into a kennel, and they forgot about them. So a couple of months later, when the king returned and sent his servants to collect his dogs, you can imagine, their fur was mangy and matted, and the dogs were thin from being underfed and under-exercised. Well, when the king saw them, he was furious. He sent immediately for the bishop, and he didn't waste his words. My Lord Bishop. I entrusted you with my treasure, and you have treated them worse than if they had been put into hell. I am going to have you placed in the loneliest castle in my kingdom, in the deepest, darkest dungeon, and we'll see how you do without food for a month! Well, when the bishop heard this, he fell to his knees and begged for mercy, but the king was having none of it. Until one of the king's advisers, a wise old knight, suggested it might be a... Uh, a good idea to find a more profitable and amusing way to punish the bishop. King John thought for a moment, and then he smiled. He'd had one of his ideas. My Lord Bishop, said King John, I understand that you are a man of great wit and intelligence. I will offer you a challenge. I will set you three questions to answer. If you answer them to my satisfaction, then you will go free. If you fail me, I will take possession of everything you own. Now, I'm a fair man, so I will give you tonight to find out the answers to these questions. Do you agree? Well, the bishop had no choice, so he agreed. He thought to himself, I am a clever man, so uh, if the king does ask me questions, I can always go and look in my library books to find the answer to any puzzle or riddle. The king called the bishop forward and whispered the questions in his ear. When the bishop heard the questions, his face grew pale, his knees started to knock and tears ran down his face. So we are agreed then, said King John. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Well, the bishop went back to his rooms. He was crying his eyes out. His servants didn't know what to do until one of them stepped forward and asked him what the matter was and he explained the situation. The servant looked thoughtful and said, My oh, Lord Bishop, I think I might have an idea to get you off the hook. The bishop asked him what it was. He said, Well, there is in your palace, in the bakehouse, a baker, a man who many people have remarked could well be your twin brother, for he is the same as you in his build, in his face, why, even his voice and his mannerisms are the same. People are often confused. They call him my Lord Bishop, thinking they've just walked by you. <laughs> what if you got him to dress in your robes and to go before the king and answer the questions? You could make good your escape, and that fellow could take your punishment. Well, the bishop wasn't sure. So the servant sent for this fellow, this baker. When he arrived, it was incredible. He looked the absolute spit of the bishop. The bishop thought he was looking in a mirror. He got the baker to exchange clothes with him so that he was dressed in the baker's apron and the baker was dressed in his robes. Now, it was incredible. You couldn't tell them apart. The bishop began to think the plan might just work. Uh, my fine fellow, the bishop said to the baker, the reason I have called you here and we have exchanged our clothes is that uh, I have a jest for you to take part in. Uh, the king and I, as you know, he is staying here. Well, we have a contest between us, a challenge, if you like. 
Um, we set each other three questions a day. Tomorrow it's my turn, but unfortunately I've been called away on very, very important church business. I was wondering if you would take my place and answer the king's questions. Hmm. Well, the baker was a kind-hearted fellow, but he wasn't a fool. What are the questions, my Lord Bishop, he said. Oh, they are very, very easy, said the bishop. If you agree, I will tell you. Baker thought to himself for a moment. Purse of gold. Very well, my Lord Bishop, I agree. Tell me the questions. Well, the bishop said, they're very, very easy. I will advise you tomorrow morning when you go before the king, stand in the shadows so he doesn't see you clearly. And uh, as to the questions, they are very, very straightforward. One, how much water is there in the Kingdom of England? Two, how far is it to heaven? Three, what to the nearest penny is the king worth? There you are. Now, I really must be on my way. And with that, the bishop left. Hmm. Thought the baker to himself. Tricky. I'll sleep on it. Next morning, the baker got up bright and early and dressed in the bishop's clothes and made his way to the king's chamber. The king was waiting for him. Ah, my lord bishop, he said. Do come forward. Which the baker did, but he was very careful to make sure that he stood just beside a column so that there was a shadow thrown over him. Good morning, my lord bishop, said King John. I trust you slept well. And thank you, my lord king. So, no matter of the questions, said King John, a cruel smile on his face. Number one, how much water is there in my kingdom of England? The baker looked puzzled for a moment. Well, my lord king, he said, I suppose you would think this would be a tricky matter to settle, but actually, I measured it quite easily. Because last night, for once in this kingdom, there was no rain. I had to calculate the amount of water that ran down the rivers and into the sea, but I, I balanced that with the amount of water in the morning dew. And I calculate the amount of water in your Kingdom of England to be 106,614,815 cupfuls. And with that, he produced a cup. The king looked perturbed for a moment. That's a very precise calculation, my Lord Bishop, he said. Ah, well, the bishop said. I measured it myself. King John looked suspicious. But how do I know that you're right? Uh, an easy matter, my Lord King. I will happily give you this cup, and you can take yourself out to tonight and measure for yourself. Well, the king knew that he was being played. But it was only the first question. Very well, my Lord Bishop, he said. I'll give you that one. But now the second question. My Lord Bishop, how far is it to heaven? The Bishop said, my Lord King, with this answer, I had a piece of luck. Last night, one of the bakers here in my palace, a, a kind honest fellow, more suited to be a saint than a baker, fell ill and died. And I went to say a prayer for him. Now, when I started to speak the words, miraculously, he suddenly leapt up. He came back to life. His eyes opened. And I immediately asked him a question. I said, what have you seen? My Lord Bishop, he said, I have been to heaven. How far away was it? I said, my Lord Bishop, he said, it was 200 miles. Is it 200 miles for everybody? I asked him. Oh, no, 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 said the fellow. Some people have made a longer journey than me. And some people joined me as I walked. Their journey was far shorter. Your journey depends on how many good deeds you have done. Yes, said the king. Tell me more. Well, my lord king, said the baker. With that, the poor fellow died. And he did not revive. So I'm afraid the only answer I can give you, my Lord King, is that the distance to heaven is down to the individual, and <laughs> it depends on what good deeds you do in this life. Hmm, thought the King. 
Well, logical, I suppose. I will give you that question. But the third, I will not be so generous, for I know my own value. My Lord Bishop, what am I worth? Uh, the Bishop looked at the King. My Lord King, he said, I know that you are a man of wealth. You have gold, you have silver, you have jewels, you have furs, you have silks. So this was a difficult thing to calculate. But I have an answer for you. My Lord King, I calculate your worth to be 29 pence. How dare you? 29 pence. That's less than two and a half shillings. That's, that's less than the cost of the shoes on my feet. You have just talked your way, my Lord Bishop, into a dungeon. My Lord King, said the baker, please. I calculate your value and your worth like this. As you'll know in the Bible, when Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus, he was given a purse of coins. 30 silver coins was the price of his betrayal. My Lord King, I honour you at one silver coin less than God. Well, the King rubbed his nose talked for a moment and then he started to laugh <laughs> this this bishop I had heard that he was proud and haughty and yet I talk to him now and find him to be the wittiest wisest man in my kingdom my Lord Bishop come forward come forward you have won well the Baker forgot himself he did just that he stepped forward out of the shadow of the column and into the light King John stared at him. You are not the bishop. So, my fine fellow, tell me who you are and tell me what is going on, or you will find yourself thrown into a dungeon from which you will never emerge. Speak now. The baker knew the game was up, so he fell upon his knees before King John told him the whole story of how the bishop had summoned him, dressed him in his robes, told him the questions and how he'd gone away and thought of answers, thinking that the whole thing was just for the king's amusement. King John looked at him. You are by far the wisest, wittiest, most honest man in my kingdom. What to do with you? From this day forth, you will continue to wear the robes that you now wear, and you will be a bishop. The bishop, when he is apprehended, will be brought back here to his palace, where he shall be put to work baking bread in the kitchens. So that, my friend, is how a baker became a bishop. Right, I've got to get back to work. So have you. I'll talk to you soon.